but on the ground it doesn't matter let me bring in couple we have uh, we have 5 6 minutes left so i want to just get in as many interjections as i can from both of you uh, couple there is this there is this uh, idea that secularism in the way that nehru imagined it you know nehru famously uh, not wanting the president uh, for rajendra prasad to go for the somnath mandir uh, uh, sort of ceremony uh, that secularism has gone and that secularism hasn't in fact worked for india because it has failed to understand that culture and religion are intertwined in india and therefore even if you do not necessarily in, in you know uh, endorse an institutional faith uh, you culturally identify that is the core of your identity you say jai shri ram or jai siya ram uh, uh, in place of hello hi and and, and so on uh, and that the deracinated faithless westernized liberal uh, that might be words used to describe you me hindol anybody uh, i'm not saying this is how we see ourselves i'm saying this is how people may see us we're out of sync we're out of sync with how people of india feel and no significant muslim opposition has actually been made to this moment and iqbal ansari's story is quite moving i interviewed him he was a litigant in that case and he said now the court has spoken i accept the verdict with with happiness i will take part in it right if, if, if there's anything that's historically literate it's to claim that the the project that was fluted in 1947 after the departure of india was an elite project it was the constitution of india was debated thoroughly it was ratified in a free election for the first time and franchised millions in india voted for it it was not a project imposed upon people it was a project ratified by the people and this idea this constant you know you talked about us being elites and anglophone so what i mean am i are we supposed to just surrender to the basest impulses of people to say that we are wrong because of your feelings are we supposed to subordinate the constitutional laws of this country you know the 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 the, the respect for so this is citizens. a supreme court verdict if you're talking about constitutional law I'm talking about 91 92 when you know the tearing down of the mosque you know are we to subordinate everything to the basest impulses of people because they feel that a particular way since when are feelings so important since when do, this is not a religious republic you know this is a democratic republic a secular republic you know if feelings are to be given the position uh, if feelings are to be made sacrosanct then i might have feelings and at some point many other people might share those feelings what if a what if at a certain point many people feel that hinduism is you know a very a very primitive form of life because it actually segregates human beings it no other people no british uh, no outsider no muslim has mistreated hindus more than hindus have done themselves to this day there is discrimination in the name of caste is that shouldn't we use our energy to improve that i don't want, i don't want to sound um i don't want to sound like somebody who doesn't get the feelings and the emotions involved in this but i also don't understand this idea that we have to submit surrender meekly to people who talk about feelings please you know i have no time for this and they'll, okay. they'll build this you no know, just one second back they'll build this temple they'll open this temple this is a moment of triumph for them fine they'll have this moment but there is something very important to remember that all well talked about that you know power worship distorts the way you think power worship leads you to believe that this moment present trends will always hold they won't there will come a time this moment will be looked upon as a shameful moment i'm pretty confident of that and the people who now worship modi who fabricate apologies for them the rationalizations for him they'll be covered in shame okay so i take it before i give him all the last word that you do not you do not give any importance to the fact that this is actually come from the supreme court of india on a bench led you know by uh, uh, the now chief justice i mean i don't think he led it then but he is widely believed to have written the judgment you're basically therefore then saying the supreme no, court's no, I, voice no i'm not saying that you're putting words into my mouth i'm saying i'm asking tearing, you i'm the tearing down of the mosque was a barbaric act that is not justified by the feelings of the hindu community number 1 number 2 is the event that is taking place on the 22nd of january is a political event in which the deity of that uh, the deity who is moving so many hindus uh, is actually being subordinated to the political aspirations of one man shouldn't that insult hindus so i'm making those two very specific points okay i do have to close i'll give the last word uh, to hindol with a question of my own and the question is uh, 
the Supreme Court verdict actually referenced the Places of Worship Act. The Places of Worship Act, which is now being, you know, is back in court, uh, was supposed to say that there is a finite, there has to be a finite closure on how many uh, mosques we go looking underneath for signs that temples once stood there because, you know, there has to be at some point closure. There has to be at some point reconciliation. And to be honest, I, as an Indian, I would have, uh, I would have, really preferred had this moment perhaps come as a as a moment of consensus between and community you know between and among communities and those efforts were made they didn't yield any results and so, the, so the supreme court has delivered this verdict as far as i'm concerned the supreme court has the last word on this and that word has been spoken and now the question is can this be made into a moment of healing but what worries me is is there a danger that this could now lead to other demands at other sites that there is no closure, that this is going to open the floodgates? That's my last question to you. Let me begin by uh, answering your question by saying I'm, I was once again today amused to hear this old colonial tribe that, you know, Hinduism, this terrible thing, which, you know, which which oppressed people for hundreds of thousands no, of years, yeah. and they were cast yeah. and so on and so forth. I mean, all of this has been academically demolished and shown to be absolutely... I think Kapil's trying possible. to clarify that he did but, or did uh, not say that. No, no, but let me, I didn't interrupt when he spoke. I think I deserve my right to speak too. I, I did not interrupt him when he spoke. Okay, so Kapil, hang on, hang on. I'll let you speak after this. Hindal, go ahead. Yeah. So, look, I mean, this this kind of tribe we have heard many times before. It You know, it matters to no one. But sure, they can keep being repeated. I mean, so what? Um, as far as the legality of the question is concerned, uh, yes, indeed, the Supreme Court's version has to be the final word. It must be. That's what institutions do. Uh, they give us the final word when society cannot make up the final word. Uh, yes, there were attempts to you know, reconcile the communities. They didn't work. Now, that's a whole history in itself. We don't have time to go into that. I do not think I do not think, and only time will tell, you know, we are making forecasts in this conversation, only time will give us the answer. I do not think this will necessarily, you know, uh, there is this old thing that every time, uh, you know, certain kinds of political movements rise, India will be torn apart and there will be riots everywhere. None of this has happened, you know, you know, th this is, uh, you know, 10 years have gone by, maybe more will happen. None of this has happened. I, you know, my faith is really in broader Hindu society and their, you know, feelings, and really feelings. Surely if today, in, in our woke times, if we cannot care about feelings, when will we care about feelings? So, you know, maybe we can keep aside the hypocrisy there. But um, but yes, I, I have great faith in the pluralism of Indian society, of um, which is majority Hindu. I have great faith in the inherent pluralism of Hindu society. And I don't think necessarily that this is the path towards doom, as some people are claiming it to be. I do think that this is certainly a moment of great uh, resurgence uh, for Hindu civilization. Uh, are there fears that things may go wrong? But there are fears that things may go wrong in as large a country as ours all the time on everything. But I certainly don't think that this is necessarily uh, going to lead to a future which is so bleak and dark as has been described uh, on your show. Okay, Kapil, quick clarification and then 30 seconds to both of you. Yes, quickly. Uh, this, this, is, this is, so caste is a colonial slur. It was invented by the colonialists. There is no caste in caste discrimination or prejudice in the name of caste in India. That is a colonial But you invention. weren't smearing an entire faith, right? Every, every religion has its orthodoxy, its malpractices. Most orthodoxies are tilted against women, for example, in all faiths. All there I'm asking you is, all I'm, all I'm saying to you is, that is Yemen, can, I, Japan, can, I, can I just get my question in, then you can respond. Yes. All I'm asking you is that I thought when you gave that example, you were talking about caste in Hinduism as an example, that what if I were to feel this? You weren't actually actually making a judgment about a faith. I would hope that you were not. I was trying to clarify that the energies of, of, of the faith if Hindus want to reform themselves, as Mahatma Gandhi did, would be better spent, I think, rather than tearing down the houses of worship of others uh, on reforming their own society, our own society. And I think that Babri Masjid is not the end. They will be, this is the beginning. They will go for more mosques. The thing is, concessions to religious bigots, religious um, revivalists never result in the recession of their demands. They will keep making more demands. And I don't believe that this is uh, this is the end of India. I actually believe that this is 
the beginning of the end of uh, these fanatics who've taken over India. Okay, Hindal, I'm going to give you the closing comment. Look, I mean, we are ending on a note of uh, prediction. So who can really predict the future of a 1.4 billion strong people? I can only say that, uh, you know, in my personal lived experience and the lived experience of millions of others, there is certainly a mood that is, you know, or there is certainly a feeling that's surging across India. Uh, I mentioned this in your earlier show, Barkhan. Since you mentioned the author, allow me to mention that again. The same Nirja Chaudhary recently told you in an yes. interview that she was at Kashi and she saw 20, 30,000, maybe more young people, young Indians quietly, you know, without disturbing anybody, without creating a ruckus, with no conflict at all, watching, gathering to watch the Ganga Aarti. This in many ways is unprecedented across India. It's happening at scales never seen before. And therefore, I say that at this moment, at least, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't want to predict anything future. But at this moment, at least, there is a great resurgence and a positive resurgence uh, of, um, of a particular kind of, uh, you know, feeling among Hindus. And I, again, I have great faith in the inherent pluralism of Hindu society. You know, fundamentally, I believe Hindus are, you know, centrist. No extreme ever fundamentally exists for a long time in Hinduism. Finally, the needle shifts back to the center. Uh, and I think I have great faith in that, and I do think uh, that's what's going to happen. Um, and I have my, you know, faith and trust in that.